Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft Amplified server. This is the 132nd hour of Hermitcraft. Can you believe it? I saw a lot of you discussing that in the last episode. What with it being the 300 special, you're all talking about how long Hermitcraft have been running for and I added all of the episodes together and it's 132 hours. That is a little bit of a mind-boggling number right there but it has happened over a couple of years I guess. So anyway we are hanging out over here in front of the UHC room. Let's go inside and talk about this. Your feedback on this project was absolutely amazing. You know I spent a really long time working on this in creative and then building it in survival and it kind of lost its effect on me. I touched on that last episode but the feedback was amazing. It seemed like a lot of you really liked this build and I don't think I saw one negative comment about it which was uh, pretty unusual actually. When you build something usually everyone's got a different opinion but the feedback was just all round great which I'm really pleased about. And we're going to be doing a little bit of work in here today but what I actually want to start out by doing is placing down a chest and uh, delivering a message to all of the other hermits. So if you're watching um, we're just going to write something on here quickly. Player Skulls here and a smiley face. There we go. Um, so yes, if you're a hermit and you're watching this or if you're just a viewer, if you want to go over to the other hermits videos and leave a comment, in fact, if you do do that, um, upvote another comment. We don't want to spam anyone. If you see someone who's already left a message, just give them an upvote. What I'd like to do is get a message out to all of the hermits that they can team up and come over here and they have a reason to hang out together and then kill each other <laughs> and put their skulls into this chest right here. So I'm encouraging the other hermits to sever each other's heads and put them in this chest effectively. So then I can take those heads and put them on sticks in our building, <laughs> which is really strange, uh, but it is a very strange and blocky game, as we know. But yes, I just want a reason for the other guys to get together and do what me and Biffa did and uh, kill each other, which I think, oh, Mumbo logged out. He was on a moment ago. Uh, Mumbo will obviously be quite hesitant. He is at zero deaths. Um, to do so. So they don't have to, you know, of course, if he doesn't want to, it's fine. But if anyone wants to donate their skull, then that's the way to do it. So go over to those other videos. Remember, if there's already comment, just uh, upvote it. And then hopefully the hermits will come along and donate the skulls, which is pretty cool. So uh, what we're actually going to do right now, I think, is just a little bit of work on this thing before we move on to some other things. Today's episode is going to be a bit more relaxed. After all of this work, we're going to just focus on a couple of little things here and there. So the first thing that I'd actually like to do is do some more digging, get away all of the materials on either side. Uh, when I say materials, I mean the stone and stuff that's already here so that we have room to build the rest of this, which is not what we're going to do today. But my thinking is we've got a beacon over here. It's big and it's gold and it's kind of ugly and we don't want that thing just sitting out there um, all the time. So if I make use of the digging right now, just get all of that area cleared out for the future, uh, then we can remove the beacon and we can move on from this project for today. Things are looking good here on the inside. I've cleared out a large area on either side that is awesome and I ran out of my food so I crafted myself some golden apples since I had some apples and gold lying around and uh, now we've got these fart bubbles in our face as Corrales would say and these particle effects you know they're a good way of indicating that you know you have an effect on you but they really do disrupt the visuals right here you know got these big particles flashing across your face it is a little bit silly especially for videos as well but there you go been eating some golden apples getting some extra hearts it's all good and we've cleared out a large space on either side this goes 32 blocks in that direction 32 in that it was just out of range of the haste effect the last bit so it's a little bit slower to do than usual but all of that's been cleared out and I calculated how many extra spaces we would get with these 32 blocks I think it is 10 on either side so another five of these that means there's 14 spaces on either side you know seven on this seven on that and 28 in total which I think is actually a little bit more than we needed I think we only need 21 so it might have been a bit of overkill but 28 is certainly enough with time and there's something that you guys have been mentioning from the last video it just sort of popped into my head the carpet effect we kind of discussed how the torches particles didn't go through the carpet apparently if you put this on a wall as opposed to on the ground it will go through and uh, you can kind of see it right there can't you so it looks like the torch itself is a little bit higher the animation starts a little bit higher and maybe actually the particles are starting above the carpet no they're starting below or maybe inside I don't know it's not really important is it but I thought I would mention that since some of you guys um, had been mentioning it. So we're going to go out the front now and have a look at the entrance to this place because we do need to build an entrance. I did plan on doing a little bit of prettying up work around the front here but that digging took a long time. One of the things I haven't done by the way is taken down the beacon so I am going to do that next. That thing is going to wait, uh, go away even. 
But what we want to do out the front here is obviously pretty this up, put a couple of trees, some flowers and sugarcane around the front here, give it that nice natural feel. But we also need to think about where the path to this thing is going to go. I've got two ideas at the moment, and what I originally thought of doing is have it curve around this side and go off in this direction. So we can kind of fill in a little bit of the water around here, level this bit off, and then over on this side our path would have to go straight through the water so I was thinking what can we do that would be interesting there and I had this idea to use some blue wool some lapis blocks and some lily pads and kind of make a path like that that you could actually walk over across the water and it might work it could be something um, that is interesting so that is an idea that I'm thinking of and then the other alternative is that we have a path going off into the other side because over here we have the crown hall and Slipgator has some platforms around the outside um, that lead up to it and could possibly lead over to this area as well. So there is the platform at the bottom for getting up to the Crown Hall and if we go right the way over here you can just about see the other platform. There's a diagonal staircase that leads up to this one. So we could do something very similar, have a diagonal staircase come down on the other side. Of course I would run that by slip, it's his building, it'd be up to him. Um, but it is quite a long way away if you look, you know, it'd have to be a big staircase coming down all the way over here and I don't know where it would end up so maybe that would not be the best of ideas I don't really know what's best uh, for traffic possibly both could work uh, but we're not going to work on that today because I've got a few more things that I want to do one of them is bring all of these items back to our base I'm really glad we made that storage room because Look, look at this, we've got tons of stuff to fill it up with. So I'm going to have to take a whole bunch of trips back and forth and remove this stuff first of all. It's going to take some time to do and all of this inventory right here is just a massive mess after that project. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the next priority. Clear this up before we do anything else. Alright, job done and there's another job still back here. Look at this, it's such a mess. I really do need to find some time to sit down and organise all of this stuff but at least it's better than it was a while ago and when I look in this direction I get around 35 frames per second in this direction we get the full 60 that is kind of worrying and uh, this thing down here by the way it stopped working because I've moved the beacon in fact if we look over in that direction you can see it's been removed all of that over there is sorted out uh, but the beacon over here now has speed 2 and so when I walk up the ramp here it doesn't work uh, except it just did maybe it's when I'm sprinting sprinting plus speed 2 is too fast for it there you go. So you go straight over, which will catch me out on occasion, but if I just go up without sprinting, uh, then it should be fine. So anyway, let's head down this way. We have been distracted from finishing our shop for a few episodes. We had the Ender Dragon fight, and then we had the 300 special with the UHC thing over there, and I've been meaning to do this, and finally we're going to get around to it. So we're going to set up the prices of the things that we're selling and all that kind of stuff today, except it has been a little bit of time since I last thought about this. So the plan was to both sell and buy lapis, to do some book exchanging as well, and also to sell some buttered carrots, as Slipgator calls them. I think that's a really cool name for them. And uh, there were some other ideas that I had as well, but I kind of forgotten them, so I hope I wrote them down. I'm going to give myself some time to think and uh, plan everything out, you know, move the items over here, and then I'll go through with you what I'm selling as well. So, it will take me a little bit of time to do this. I better head back and, uh, and grab some stuff, but we're going to set up the shop, and when it's done, I'll be back with you. So I'm doing a little bit of preparation, came down here to get some carrots because we've got to make those golden buttered carrots and I remember that me and Tango met up and we had a little bit of a chat about things that are going on in this area. So first of all, I've taken down all of the sugarcane farm. Just around the corner here we have uh, Mumbo's automatic one which is hidden underground so no need for this anymore. We'll dump that in there for now but this is awesome, you know, nice little community sugarcane farm. You can just stroll along and pick up that when you need it. So we don't need that space for that over there anymore but it does mean that we can expand the carrot farm. And while we're setting up all of this and playing here on the server today I'm going to try and get as many carrots as I can for the shop. We obviously have all the gold in the world but a couple of the other things me and Tango discussed were the amount of mobs in this area. So these cows right here the idea is to keep some of them up here on the surface they're probably going to go alongside one of the paths in the canopy which we will extend in the future and have a nice little um, pen I guess you know something aesthetic and interesting looking but simply just to hold the cows you know on the surface in this area so someone can grab them if they want to do something with the cows you know breathe them up and uh, take them away because otherwise all the cows are down in this area over here and I think this might be where the lag is coming from my frames do drop down a little bit when we're in here and it's probably quite noisy as of now but Tango's also going to take down the numbers of these cows you can see there's 80 in there I think he's going to reduce them to about 50 in each so hopefully that will help with the lag but I don't think it's the main cause because I don't know it's not just when I look in that direction 
It's when I look up here at the moment that it's actually going down to 35. Maybe it's the sheep that are causing the lag. That wouldn't surprise me. I made this pen a bit bigger recently because there were lots of sheep in there. And since I've done that, their numbers have definitely gone up. Someone's been breeding them and there's proof of that because there's purple sheep and pink sheep. And I never made any purple or pink. I only made the red and the, uh, the blue ones as well as the brown and black. And that's where we've been doing our various little projects with coloured walls. So someone's been breeding them and there's probably too many here. However, now, once again, my frames are around 60. So while I'm out here doing some farming, I'm definitely going to be doing a little bit of lag busting as well. We're going to take down the numbers of the sheep, probably the cows as well. Tango is online so I can speak to him about that and these pigs here as well. Their numbers will be brought down. Hopefully we can fix a little bit of the lag while we're working out here. So frame rates have been improved a little bit but in this area it is starting to get worse it feels. We're at around 50 at the moment and whenever I move it just sort of drops down. In fact the faster I move the more it drops down which is interesting. It's around 40 when walking and about 35, 30 when sprinting. It's not good. It does worry me because some of these bugs are just Minecraft and, you know, Minecraft maps getting old. Even this one is only, you know, weeks or maybe even a month now old. Uh, but there you go. Anyway, this did help. We reduced the number of the sheep over here and also some of the cows from down below. So that's made a difference. And while we're doing that, I've been farming loads and loads of carrots, as you can see. So let's head over to the shop. I've set up a few things for trade and it kind of occurred to me when I was setting them up that not so many things are too obvious until they're necessary you know when you're out doing something and you're thinking oh man I could really do with another beacon then all of a sudden you know you want to put some wither skulls up for well no not up for sale up for buying in your shop um, but at the moment I can only think of a few things so let's go over what's for sale over here in this corner we have lapis we are both buying and selling this which might not make a lot of sense but the thing is if you've got more lapis than you need then you can sell it cheap and buy it expensive. I think that is the right way around. I keep thinking about how this has been set up and then when you need more of it you buy it cheap and sell it expensive. So over here we're buying 64 lapis for one diamond. This is the system that I'm going to use. You've got the uh, the price or the thing that's for sale on the paper. And then over on this side over here we're selling 24 lapis for one diamond. So you might think, oh that's a rip off. But the thing is I am trying to gain more lapis because I want to do a lot of enchanting. So it makes sense to do this if someone really does need some lapis then they can get some. But I'm more interested in buying it from people in large quantities. Um, then over here we have some books and I was going to do a buy and sell thing over here but I'm really not sure what it is I want to buy yet. I think Silk Touch is one um, but I got to do a lot more enchanting first of all which is something we're going to do in the future. So these books right here are worth two diamonds and I haven't even put infinity on my own bow yet so that's something that I'd like to do. I will leave those two in there for now and then over on this side it is two books for a diamond. All of these have feather falling four. They are actually quite common so I figured that two, two of those for one diamond was a pretty fair trade right there. Then in the middle we have our buttered carrots and this thing maybe we'll change it, maybe we won't. I do kind of agree, if you take the fact that you know it's a buttered carrot out of it, then it does look a little bit odd. So we might work on that at some point, uh, but for now we're going to leave it and check it out. We've got all of these golden carrots, they look awesome, and they're going to be one diamond for a stack, which is a really reasonable price, you know. You do have to do a little bit of farming and gather some gold, spending some AFK time over there at the gold farm. But doing all of that and put it together, I think uh, one diamond is a pretty fair price. So, um, what else do we want to have a look at? This over here, yes. Coming soon, that's right, I'm not actually trading any of these slime blocks yet. I've only got two stacks of these, and these are going to be like gold dust. Everyone is going to want these things on the server, so I want to get a large amount of these. And next episode, we're probably going to look at setting up a simple automated method for killing the slimes. I've got an idea in mind that if it works, it will be ridiculously easy to set up, which will be really cool. Um, but there you go, so we'll do that soon. I <laughs> like a little bit of a slime explosion going on here to advertise that. So if someone comes in here, they'll see this and they'll think to check back later because one of the things I want to do is update the trades quite often, you know, as I need things and as I've got things to sell, things are going to change in here. So I want people to have that in mind that it's a good idea to, uh, to come back. And then up the top here, we've got absolutely nothing going on. I've got one chest with a few items from where I've removed things and place things in the shop and that's it. So nothing of interest up top here as of yet, maybe in the future we will, but for now we are going to move on to something else.
Where are we, eh? Are we in the end? Or have I built an obsidian floor with some endstone around it? We are in the end, of course. You can probably hear some of the endermen up above. We have come here to do a little bit of enderpearl farming. It's going to be manual for now. We've got this thing right here to stand underneath. We're also going to check out something that Biffa has preserved over in this direction and chat a little bit about enderpearls because I've gotten very used to not having enderpearls. It was one of the things I thought I was going to miss the most and actually it's made you quite localized as a play. You know, we've all sort of stuck in the same area. Moving around is difficult anyway and not having access to enderpearls has been a part of that. So, just so you know, we have an ender crystal over here preserved. Biff has put this shell around it so that no one ever touches it. And I don't think you can move these anymore. You used to be able to move them through the portal and bring them into the overworld, which is some crazy stuff. Uh, but it's really good to know that we've got at least one of those preserved over here, which is cool. Because they are very cool looking, actually. So anyway, we haven't had enderpearls for a while. And because of that, we've become a little bit localized. And now I've been thinking about how I'm going to use enderpearls. Because obviously you use them to travel, except... We're not really going to travel too far because of the amplified terrain. So it gave me some ideas for using enderpearls in a different way to normal. You know, something a little different from just having them on your hotbar and chucking them around wherever you go. So I'm going to do a little bit of farming. Then we're going to go back to the overworld and build this thing. It's going to be a little bit experimental. I'm not sure if it's really going to work out. Uh, but I wanted to try something different, you know. It's always good to think outside the box. Don't do things the way you think they're supposed to. Always try different things. And, uh, oh, this is so derpy farming them like this, isn't it? Farming is slow. It's not going very well. They don't drop the enderpearls too often, but we don't really need too many at the moment. However, I've noticed something while I've been out here. I have made this little shape to kind of demonstrate it. We've got a bit of a, well, it's not a circle. It's more of a, a square on the other angle around this central point right here. But you'll notice on this side, we have a kind of cut in um, that leads into... A central point and this is to lead the enderman into a line in front of the player because they now have AI they will look for the shortest paths it doesn't matter uh, what side you're on you don't have to turn around you know to face the enderman they will actually walk all the way around to the front regardless of what direction they come from and, uh, and yeah they'll walk into this bit right here so if we look at a few of them all at once which can be a little bit tricky and you've got to stand right in the middle to get them to go to the right spot there we go, we're attracting a few, quite a few now, we've got a mob of them coming over, and look at this, they all line up and you can just whack them continuously, and you can even set up some hoppers and a chest as well if you wanted to, to pick up all the uh, enderpearls, because they're all going to drop around this same point right here, and that is an awesome little thing. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit tired of this. It is taking its time. We do not have too many ender pearls, but you know what? I'm not going to be using loads of them straight away, so that's okay. And I got 50 levels of XP, which kind of reminds me of the old times spent at the Enderman farms back when we had the old XP system. So I think my bed has actually been removed because the last time I slept in one, I do believe, was outside the UHC monument. So when we hop through here, we're probably going to end up back at spawn and your home or bed was missing or obstructed. For a second there, I thought we were inside a block, we're actually under the water, and here we are at spawn, but good guy Hypno has set up a portal over here, so getting back is going to be no problem at all. This is awesome. What's in here? Aha, a few bits and bobs, some food. Welcome to spawn by Hypno. Is there actually uh, a message in this? I don't remember him writing a book. Hi there, you've apparently fallen and hit your head. <laughs> Brilliant. You're now at the Hermitcraft Amplified Server World Spawn. Here's some food to get you by. Please be courteous and only take one or two items to get by. Next page. If you happen to take the last or notice the supply is really low, please be a good hermit, hermit citizen and refill for the next unlucky hermit. Thanks and enjoy your stay on the Hermitcraft server. That's awesome. I really like that. Anyway, let's head back. We are going to go and build something for these ender pearls. So what is it we are going to be building? It is an enderpearl launcher. There it is behind me. This thing is awesome. It is a sweet little contraption that takes no time at all to build. I was watching my own tutorial for this actually and right as I was getting the materials together I told me myself <laughs> I told myself what they were in the video and that is one of the most appreciated things in the tutorials I think I've always had really good feedback and reception about going over the materials you need before you build something And it was definitely useful for me when building this it took no time at all to build if you're interested in the tutorial There will of course be a link down there in the description box But this ender pearl launcher will throw you 75 blocks instead of what I do believe is 50 with a regular ender pearl I actually cannot remember what a regular one is but this one will take you 75 blocks which is really cool and there's a little bit of a problem at the moment. We have something in the way. This is from Zuljin's prank, and I think it's time for this thing to be 
taken down. I've enjoyed having it here for a while, but obviously we've got some other things that are going to be built in this area, and I think it's time for this thing to come down. Otherwise, we're just going to splat right into it. But the way this thing works is you have an ender pearl in your hand, and when you're right-clicking on the fence post, you're just going to open and close it instead of throwing the ender pearl. So then when you walk into it, as soon as that thing gets retracted, you throw the ender pearl, and as you saw there, a moment later, the slime blocks get pushed up, and then that sends the ender pearl off into the distance, at which point we would hit the giant torch. So we've got to take that down, and then we're going to see where this thing is going to take us. Now, obviously, what we would really do is uh, have a planned route, but we're just kind of testing it out for now. So if this lands in a good location, it could be quite useful. The idea being you're in your base, you hit the ender pearl launcher, and then before you know it, you're 75 blocks somewhere else. If we build a little landing pad, then it'll be a good way of getting around and not a regular use for ender pearls as well, which is really cool. I've never seen this used too much before, and I'm really glad we got an opportunity to do it. So anyway, let's tear down this torch and give it a go. I've got to say it, I am actually really excited for this thing right here. This could be the beginning of something awesome, you know. This is a little test set up right now, but imagine if this was going to take you from one specific location to another. For example, my base right here, it doesn't have enough room in it for one of these things, but picture it if it did. We could launch an ender pearl from here all the way over to Symmetry Falls, which would be absolutely awesome. Now, I don't know if that would actually work, but you kind of get my idea, right? You can hop from one mountain to the other using one of these ender pearl launchers. So, let's give it a go. I've been looking forward to this. It's time to do it. So, what we've got to do is hold down right click back here. We've got to be facing that fence gate, and then we've got to walk into this thing. And, oh, I think I threw two of them by mistake. The other one's gone off into the distance. Where will it land? All the way down here. That's not so bad at all, actually. And that's a really good way to get to this kind of central area. So if ever I want to hop down here to use the nether portal, that is going to be a lot faster. And uh, that's obviously just something temporary. Right, let's head back up there and do some more testing. So the proper way to do this is with just one in your hand. Otherwise, you'll do what we did a second ago. And so somewhere around here, I think it would be a good idea to have a dispenser. Well, this is actually temporary, isn't it? But wherever you've got this thing set up, a dispenser or a dropper to give you one of these, and then you can walk up to it holding down right click, and off you go. And I completely failed. How did I get that one wrong? Let's try that one more time here. Right, so we're aiming at the top part of the fence gate. We're holding down right click, we're walking into it, and that time it worked a treat. We can see the ender pearl going off into the distance. That is really cool. Awesome. So it takes us to around here. I'm not sure if I'd actually want that permanently. I'll tell you what, if it was over to the right a little bit and a little bit further forward, you might be able to hit the jump balloon, which would be fun. Um, but yeah, that's working out okay, I think. I quite like that. Anyway, I've got a few other things I want to test. So on the way back over here, I think I answered my own question. I was thinking, you know, what's going to happen if we throw an ender pearl onto this thing right here? And then it got me thinking, you know, the reason that the ender pearl bounces off of it is not because it's a slime block, but because the slime block is moving upwards. So any entities that are above it are going to get the bounce effect. So if we throw an ender pearl onto it right now, we're simply going to waste it. Yep, there you go. And we got an endermite. That is actually the first one that I think I've seen here on the server. Let's kill that guy quickly and replace those slime blocks. So anyway, this got me thinking that there's no reason why an ender pearl falling down wouldn't bounce back up again if the slime blocks were to move up. So if we were to launch one from here, it goes off down into the distance and there's another little slime block thing down there, then it could then project that thing onwards and perhaps you could travel even further, which is something I reckon you could pull off. It might be a little tricky with timing and you'd need a lengthy amount of redstone between the contraptions, but it's kind of a, an interesting idea that could become useful here on the server. You know, you throw an ender pearl and along the way there's some platforms that keep it moving along so you can travel long distances at once. But it was fun to play around with this thing. I don't think I'm going to be using this too much. However, it is kind of useful for getting down near to the portal at the moment and we'll probably reposition this into a different place in the future. So from down here, I've noticed that this overhang that we have up the top there, that pathway, is actually quite artificial looking. And same for the entrance. You know, it's very obvious that that doesn't quite look right. And I think when we get around to finishing that area up there, we need to think about how it's going to look from down here as well. But I've just been looking around and things are really coming along around here. You've got Mumbo Jumbo's Redstone Consultancy with some paths around the outside. One of the things that I've noticed the Hermits have been putting down like some markers for paths. We've got some half slabs over here to lead over to there. And then round on this side, my path leads up to full symmetries ones. And I think it's going to go around this side 
uh, a little bit as well. So there's that right there. XP Crafted has also been working on his path, so soon the canopy will be extended and all the paths will be joining together and things will be looking absolutely awesome. But we're going to be doing that in a future episode. This one was a little bit shorter than usual, just didn't have too much time. Spent a lot of time on the last episode doing the UHC thing. That was absolutely crazy, that project, but we did it. And in the next one, we're going to be working on this area, doing a few other things over at the slime farm as well. I'm really looking forward to it, but that's going to be it for this episode. If you've enjoyed it, please do leave a like. It will always be appreciated. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.